and welcome to the week 16 edition of Instant Replay, where I give you my take on the most controversial calls of the weekend. I'm Simon Borg. We start in Portland, where the Houston Dynamo felt they scored a perfectly good goal in the 15th minute, with the score still nil-nil. Referee Baldomero Toledo calls it off for an alleged pick move by Ricardo Clark on Jorge Villafaña, who hits the deck. But as we can see from the replay, it's Villafaña who runs into Clark, which is exactly the case he's making to the ref. To no avail, no goal. Clark and Villafaña came together again in the opposite box later in the first half. It's the 39th minute, the Timbers are up a goal, and here it does look to me like Clark bumps into Villafaña, who has position. The Timbers left back doesn't get the call, and he goes down a second time, this time on a challenge from Luis Garrido, but I don't see anything there. I'll tell you what's definitely not a penalty, this dive by Timbers winger Rodney Wallace in the 42nd minute. Perfect form, the only thing missing, a foul! But Toledo did eventually point to the spot in this one. In the 59th minute, David Horst sends Norberto Paparato spinning, and the ref spots it. It's a good call, and Gaston Fernandez steps up to bury the spot kick. Timbers win 2-0. Staying in Cascadia, the Quakes pulled off a stunner, beating Seattle 2-0, and one of the goals was a beauty from San Anayasi in the first half. But he also probably should have been sent off in the second half for a second bookable offense. This late and reckless charge on Aaron Kovar in the 75th minute. Great spot by Brandon Ferris on Twitter. As things stood, it was 11 on 11 the rest of the way, and the Sounders could not find a way through. They thought they scored late in stoppage time, but Christian Roldan was offside right here. Good eye from assistant Frank Anderson. Another good call by referee Ismail Elfath at RFK Stadium. That's Steve Newman hacking down rookie Miguel Aguilar with under 10 minutes left, and the fact that he's heading away from goal? That doesn't matter. That's a foul and a penalty. I agree with Jake Carmine. That's a good call, and Chris Rolfe takes advantage for the game winner. There was an early penalty in Toronto. It's only the eighth minute when Benoit Sheru is called for the handball in the box, and I agree with referee Alan Chapman. You see, Sheru raises his arm just enough to maintain control of the ball after his first touch fails him. It was probably instinctual, but it's still a penalty. Some want to make the argument that it was ball to hand. No way. I'll show you ball to hand. This 59th minute shot by Ignacio Piatti in the Montreal Orlando game. He fires it into the shoulder of Sean St. Ledger, and the ref correctly lets play continue. And then in the Galaxy Union match, Dan Gargan wants a handball in the 33rd minute, but Philly defender Shane and Williams has absolutely no time to react. That is quite literally ball to hand. But back to Toronto, where we could have seen two red cards, in my opinion. One for each team, New York's Andrew Jacobson and Toronto's Damian Perki. And we can probably go back to the 25th minute for the start of it all, as Jacobson tugs on Perkis' jersey and hooks his arm in the box. The Toronto defender takes a tumble, but no call. Then, in the 81st minute, these two were at it again on a set piece in the box. And as you can see the play develop, there looks to be a low blow from Perky on Jacobson, and the New York midfielder replies with what appears to be a forearm to the back of the head. A double red would have been just fine with me there, but the referee doesn't see it. And Jacobson and Perky were not done. They were still jawing at each other, and Perky was especially hot under the collar after the final whistle. To Rio Tinto, where I argue there should have been a red card just minutes into the second half, but I'm not the only one arguing it. Adrian Keith Wheeler was on Twitter are doing the same. So Morales is already on a yellow when he rakes Benny Failhopper's Achilles in the 49th minute with the ball long gone. I think it was worthy of a straight red, but at the minimum, I thought a second yellow was warranted. Referee Drew Fisher doesn't agree. Another big talking point from this match, the momentary equalizer by Sporting Kansas City, and the freeze frame says it all. Dom Dwyer was in fact behind the last defender. Assistant Marco Arruda doesn't flag it. Real Salt Lake would take the lead for good via this late own goal, but they also had two penalty shouts. The first, we can dismiss out of hand. Sebastian Jaime goes down in the 24th minute, but that looks like simulation to me, except the caution card does not come out. Michael D on Twitter was wondering if this 41st minute challenge by Benny Failhaber on Joao Plata deserved the penalty kick. No way. Failhaber is playing the ball and has position. Now compare that play to this one in the 78th minute in Colorado. It looks to me like Rapids defender Bobby Burling is going for the contact with Fabian Castillo and not for the ball. I thought that could have been a penalty, but referee Armando Villarreal judges that to be a fair challenge. The Rapids also had a penalty shot in this one with the score at nil-nil, but based on the replays, we can't tell for sure whether there's any contact with the right foot of James Riley, which the Rapids defender seems to argue. The trainers even had to come out to treat him. And we end at Red Bull Arena for a wild, wild match between New York and Vancouver. The Red Bulls got two penalties and failed to convert on both. 
The first one came in the fourth minute. This is definitely a foul by Steven Betashore on Sal Zizzo. But based on the freeze frame, I would argue that the contact that brings Zizzo down happens outside the box. But referee Jorge Gonzalez points to the spot. Bradley Wright Phillips took this penalty, and David Ostead saves it. Pretty cut and dried to me. But we had Andrew Thompson on Twitter telling us he felt there was encroachment by two of the Whitecaps players, and JT Chang saying David Ostead was way off his line. Are they both technically correct? Yes, but you just never see either of those called unless they're much more egregious. We're talking maybe another foot or so. The second penalty was not the easiest to spot by the referee. It's Betashor again who's the guilty party, and he tugs down on Anatola Bang. Gonzalez points to the spot, but for the second time, BWP watches the goalkeeper come up with another save. If you think two safe penalty kicks are tough for Red Bulls fans to swallow, how about an 11th minute red card? Sasha Kleston gets it, and when you elbow a guy and kick him between the legs, that's usually more than enough. And before we go, Emil Kirov hit us up on Twitter about a play between Ronald Zubar and Octavio Rivero that he felt was identical to the one that saw San Jose's Mark Sherrod sent off against FC Dallas. Here's the big difference to me. Zubar is trying to hurdle the player to go after the ball. Sherrod can't say the same thing. And that's just not my opinion. The independent review panel did not grant San Jose's appeal. But nice try, Emil. You should do what our friend Emil just did. Use that hashtag, Instant Replay, and I promise you, we read every single tweet. For our editor, Abner Seves, I'm Simon Borg. See you next time.